Okay, then you have goal-based agents. And goal-based agents are agents that are attempting to achieve some fixed goal, right? Now, you could think of the utility agents in this space, but they're a little bit distinct, right? So a utility agent is trying, you could say that their goal is to maximize, right? But here we mean some discrete criteria, some specified goal ahead of time, right? Like you want to, uh, in the example we're gonna say is you want to navigate your car from the beginning location to the home location or from the home location to the work location, right? And so you have this exact goal, right, of what you were trying to achieve. And once you achieve that goal, you're done, right? Uh, and so there is no sense necessarily of a utility function or anything like that. Um, instead, it's a satisfying uh, goal that you're achieving as part of what you're trying to do. Uh, now, often you do wind up having kind of some sort of measurement as to how close you are to the goal. So that's kind of close to utility. Uh, but I, I, and I don't want to make it sound like these are extremely distinct, uh, but there are different ways to think about agent cognition, if nothing else. Okay, so we're back here. We're going to open up the goal-based model, right? You could type goal or we could go down to chapter five, grid goal, right? Um, and this, we're going to work with the traffic grid model, which is a little different than the traffic basic model because it actually operates on a two-dimensional grid. And in the traditional version of this model, essentially, uh, you're setting up the, the traffic lights to do different things, right? And to run in different ways and trying to see how you can adjust the the way the cars move. But the cars move in simple patterns up, down, left, right? Here, we've actually given each of the the agents a goal of a home and a uh, and a work location so they're constantly trying to move between that home and that work location right and you can see that they kind of move around and some of them make left turns and right turns and we see different kinds of, of turns that they're actually making within the system right so as they are moving around uh, they're trying to achieve these goals right uh, so they're trying to make a left turn or a right turn in order to get near and close to the to their goal. And then at, at a certain time, right, the time changes. And if they're at home, they go to work. And if they're at work, they go to home, right? Um, so um, let's kind of look at this in a little bit more detail. We're going to use the fallow command in NetLogo to do this. So we can do fallow one of turtles, right? And this is going to highlight this particular turtle. And then we can allow, we can see them going between their work and their home. And it's printing out what their goal is when we do the follow. So you can see right now he's trying to go to work and now he's trying to go to the house, right? Um, now he's going to work, house, etc. right? So that's kind of cool, right? It lets us see him how it goes. And this particular turtle, it looks like he's actually, this particular car, he's actually able to get to and from. Now there are some other ones and sometimes you'll see them when you're moving around, they get kind of stuck and they keep going back and forth, back and forth. Um, and that's because the code that we wrote in order for them to determine how to get to and from the work or the house isn't always the best code, <laughs> to tell you the truth, right? Sometimes it, it just they just get stuck in what we'll call a local minimum, a place where they can't go. In fact, this one's actually stuck right now, not because of the, the code's not working, but because it can't, there's traffic, there's too much traffic in this intersection, right? Causing it problems, it can't get through as a result, right? Um, so that definitely happens, right? And they, you, we've could have written code that would kind of rewire it to go around or to go to other places, uh, but we want to make it a very simple illustrative example. So let's take a look at that code just to give you an idea of what it's actually doing. So now, um, when you look at the code, the Go code, right? There's now this command that says face next patch. Well, it wasn't in the original model. So let's see what that next face next patch does, next patch. So face, obviously, we've talked a little bit about that before, but face tells a turtle to face in a particular direction. In this case, it's facing a patch and it's trying to determine what the next patch is, right? So it has a bunch of code here that basically just establishes the goal and then moves to the next patch that's close to the goal, right? So it says, if I'm going home and I'm next to the patch that is my house, um, then I need to go back to work, right? And if I'm at work and you know I, I need to go home, then I go back to, to home, right? So if goal equals house and member patch here, neighbors four of house, set my goal of work, right? So if I'm right next to it, you can you can go back and forth, right? And then it, and so that's just updating when we get to the locations, right? Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try and figure out which of the patches are actually candidates for us to move on to, right? 
So let choices be neighbors with P color because white, so they're red, so they're road, or red or green, which are the traffic lights, which we consider to be hanging above the road, so they're also valid choices. Then our actual choice is going to be the choice, one of, one of those patches that is going to minimize the distance between my goal and myself, right? So whichever patch is closest to my home or my work, depending upon which one I'm heading to, then we're going to minimize the distance between those. We're going to choose that patch that minimizes distance and report that choice, right? So this is a goal-oriented agent. It has a distinct goal. And every time it's trying to take steps, that will move it closer to that goal. Now that goal changes over time, which is kind of interesting, uh, but that, that's essentially what it is, right? Now, what, why do we get to these kind of problems where we sometimes get the turtles moving back and forth, for instance, right, because they can't face? Well, you think about it, the brown patches are off limits. We said that, those are like the blocks, the city blocks that you can't just drive through the city block, right? And so it could be possible that a turtle finds up in such a way that it's like exactly opposite its goal. And so if it's slightly to the left, then it, might, then it might be the case that moving to the left actually brings it closer to the goal. But if it's slightly to the right, moving right might bring it closer. But if it's exactly in the middle, it might be that each time it moves one patch one way or the other, it gets slightly farther away from its goal. And so as a result, it keeps moving back and forth, right? Now there are ways around this problem, right? In fact, there's a whole literature in artificial intelligence that revolves around path planning and search and prevents you from like going back over the same steps you've already encountered. You know, for the, for the purposes of this, we didn't want to make the code very complex. And so we didn't include uh, the, a lot of that um, discussion within it. But you know, as an exercise for you all watching at home, feel free to modify this code and see if you can figure out how to stop it, the, the turtles from getting stuck in what we'll call local minima, like local spots that are nearly optimal, but not quite optimal, even though there's a better optimal, the optimal solution somewhere farther away. So let's see if you can figure that out. Feel free to modify the code and we'll go from there. Finally, we have the adaptive agent. And these are agents that can change not only their decisions, the actions they're gonna take, but also their strategies, right? Um, the idea that I often try and express here is that the action that an agent can take in most other types of agent cognition is the same given the, the fact that they're seeing the same environment. But an adaptive agent actually learns from past experience and then takes different actions in the future, right? Now, you could have an adaptive agent that's a utility-based agent, right? Where they're trying to actually figure out the actions to maximize the utility based upon the experiences they had before. Or a goal-based agent, right? Like, I didn't achieve that goal because I went this way, I should go that way instead, even though I'm in the same place facing the same directions, right? And that's what, that would still be an adaptive agent, right? So it's an agent that changes not only the actions it takes, but the rules by which it decides which actions to take. And so we created a model called uh, Traffic Basic Adaptive, where the agents actually play around a little bit with their acceleration and then observe what the overall speeds are and then try and figure out what the best acceleration is uh, for the system as a whole. Uh -huh. So let me show you that real quick. Okay, so here we're gonna look at the final example of agent cognition that we're gonna explore within the NetLogo Models Library. So in chapter five of the IABM textbook, you'll find traffic basic adaptive individuals and that's the one we're going to be working with today or in this little section um, so the model looks very similar to the original traffic basic and if you hit set up and go it's exactly the same uh, you will notice there's a couple of new sliders and new graphs right so and a couple of new buttons so there's an initial it's now called initial acceleration rather than acceleration because we're going to allow the agents to modify that over time there's also going to be a um, slider called ticks between tests which basically controls how often the agent explores um, new solutions, new, new um, adaptations versus exploiting the one they already have. And you'll notice this graph now just plots all the accelerations uh, so you have some idea what the distribution of accelerations are. So let's just look at it when we have the adaptive go running. So when we hit adaptive go, you'll notice immediately this graph no longer just has that one line, but now has different numbers, indicating the different cars are exploring different accelerations. And something very interesting happens when uh, we allow this model to run for a while. So right now we it looks basically still like the traffic basic model, except you will notice, right, that the, these graphs of min and max speed 
are not as um, as um, they're not as as volatile as they used to be. That there's a little bit more stability in terms of the way they work, right? Um, uh, and I mean by that by the fact that the cars aren't going absolutely zero all the time. Now, if we speed this up, right? Now we start to see even more of that, right? So now the min speed is actually greater than zero, uh, indicating that the cars are not coming to a full stop. They're not getting a, a you know stop and go traffic jam. They're actually getting to kind of a crawling traffic jam. And if we keep running the model for even longer, eventually we get to a kind of free flow state where all the turtle, all the cars are able to move at a fairly high level of speed. Um, as you can see, even the minimal, well, it just, it just hit a little bit of a traffic jam in the middle of that, but even the, you know, the minimal traffic speeds are actually getting pretty good. Well, <laughs> just got into a scenario where there's a lot more traffic jams going on. So that happens, you know, because they're adapting constantly, that can happen over time, right? Uh, if you let it run long enough, eventually you get to a spot where, in fact, all the cars are basically moving at their maximum speed. And that's because as they continue to move their average acceleration up and down, they separate out enough that that's not a problem, right? Uh, now let's look at the actual code that makes this happen. So let me blow that up a lot bigger. Um, so there's now an adaptive go procedure, um, and which basically just asks the turtles to adapt. And the adapt code basically says like, here's what we're gonna do. Whenever we run a test, we're going, to re we're going to remember how fast we were able to go during that test, right? And so every time we, we, we get a speed, we're going to put that speed in the test. Now, if, the ma if, if it's a time for us to take that test, if it's time for us to explore a new acceleration, then we'll see what our mean speed was during the last test that we ran. If our mean speed during that time period was greater than the best speed we've ever had before, then we're going to assume that the acceleration that we were using in that last time period is our best acceleration, right? And so we're going to record that over time. Now, what we're going to do once we've done all of that, right? So if, if that's the case, um, then all we're going to do is we're going to change the acceleration randomly a little bit. And we're going to just move it up and down a random floating point number, right? Uh, be, between negative 0.01 and positive 0.01. Of course, we won't let it go below zero. And we're going to reset the set speeds and test. So if we did find a good speed, we're just going to, we're going to remember what it was, but then we're going to mutate a little bit to see if we can get an even better speed, right? If we didn't, right, then um, we're going to set the speed to be equal to a little bit of what our last speed was plus the, the best speed we'd ever seen. Um, this, this is because of the fact that it might be, let's imagine that because of everything else changing the model, that one of the times when we looked at use of certain acceleration, the model worked extremely well and we had a really fast speed. That might just have been a unique scenario. So over time, we're going to average that best speed we've seen down to a mean speed, right? And so we're gonna kind of allow it to work, forget how well we did during that time and try and um, uh, look for a different best speed to show for, right? And then if that's the case, then we're gonna um, set, we're gonna reset our acceleration back to whatever that acceleration was still because it was really good, and we're always gonna mutate it a little bit more, and keep going, right? So this is a great example of adaptation, right? The speed and the actions of the agents are gonna vary based upon their past behavior. If they saw really good behavior in the past given this acceleration, they're gonna continue to use that acceleration into the future. If they didn't see good acceleration in the past, then they'll try something different in the future, right? Um, there's, this is not the first example of an adaptive agent model we've seen in this class, right? Um, and I'm not gonna tell you what the other one was. We did talk about one for quite a while, uh, but instead I'm gonna leave that as a quiz question. Uh, so think back and try and remember, was there another model in which the agents acted differently in the future based upon their past behavior. If there was, right, then that's an adaptive agent model.